Okay, uh, assalamu alaikum again to all of you. Hello, alaykum sir. G. G. Okay. okay, so let's start uh, from the point where we ended last time. Let me share the screen. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, to show the application of the PCA, we will take a simple example from the book uh, that I will be sending. Uh, the book by Johnson and Richard, Applied Multivariate Statistical Analysis, okay? Chapter number eight of this book deals with the technique of principal component analysis. The page that you can see on the screen right now is just one particular data set uh, which can be used to show the application of PCA, okay? This data, as you can see, it is a stock price data which represent weekly rate of return for five stocks. The variables in this data set represented by the five columns represent the five different stocks representing five different companies. And the object, the object represented by the row represent the week because you know, rate of return is, uh, computed for each week. So uh, each week you have the rate of return for these five stocks. And this data is actually for how many weeks? As you can see here for 103 weeks and so on. So this is just a, an extract of that data set. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up this data set, okay, in SPSS and show you how can we carry out PCA uh, on this data set. For the purpose of our analysis, the number of variables, <clears throat> which we say P is equal to five. <clears throat> As you can see here, the number of variables are not that much a larger number. In real life data analysis, the number of variables would be much, much larger than five. But here, the purpose is not <clears throat> to uh, have that particular thing. The purpose is just how can you use data on this multivariate data set to come up with the results of PCA. So therefore, keep in mind that our original number of variables represented by X1, X1 in the given case would be JP Morgan, X2, Citibank, X3, Wells Fargo, X3, Royal Dutch Shell, and X3, uh, Exxon Mobil, okay? The discussion of this data set from the book will tell you that the first three stocks or the first three companies, they are basically uh, uh, dealing with financial services. So they are actually uh, providing financial services there like Citibank, JP Morgan, right? So you can consider them as financial stocks. While the last two columns represented by Royal Dutch Shell and uh, ExxonMobil, they are actually dealing with petroleum products, okay? So you can call them petroleum stocks. This information will be later on quite useful when you will be interpreting the results of the PCA. Although initially not that much important, initially it's important that you know that I have five variables in my data set and using PCA, I want to know whether information on these five variables can be summarized in terms of a smaller number of new variables or not, right? Can we summarize information on these five variables in terms of just one new variable, just linear combination cannot be, or can we summarize it in terms of two new variables, whatever? And in the process, you will know how we actually do that. The first thing is to bring this data set into SPSS, right? 
for example, uh, in the break, I just was looking for this data set. So uh, from the net, uh, I actually uh, just went randomly to a website where all these data sets were there, okay? Don't worry, I, when I'll be sending you the other material, I would also be sending you these data sets. So your data sets are familiar. Jayenge. Uh, right now, I will be actually opening the data set. Ab dekhi yaha pe, uh, data set jo hai na, book mein. If you want to determine which data set uh, I should actually consider in this list. So you have to look at the, at the book. And in the book, this data set is represented by table 8.4, right? Table 8.4. So you should remember this, this particular information. If you want to recreate analysis using SPSS, so set up your information up which I create, your data set book make is now table 8.4. So once this information is there, you have to, because T actually stands for table. Okay, there are also other notations in this list. Like for example, you would see P, P is for problem. Okay, you would also have other like uh, example or whatever, but we are looking for the table. So T8-4, this is the data set. If I click on this one, you see, I have the data that I was actually also looking in this thing. But uh, in the file, uh, these names are not there, JP Morgan, Citibank, only this information is there, 0 0.01303, as you can see here, 0 0.01303. The heading are not there, so when you will be uh, bringing this data set into SPSS, so you have to also give the titles so that it makes sense. Okay, first column, kya represent karta hai? first column represent one financial stock, the other one represent another and so on, okay? So what I have done, I have saved this data set on my desktop, t8-4.de, uh, which is a text file, and I'm going to open up this data set in my SPSS, okay? So I will go to file, open, data, and because that data set is not directly available in SPSS format, so I would actually choose another format from here. Okay. When I come down to uh, the categories, I would find somewhere here, the text format. You see, all those data sets in which the extension is either TXT or DAT or CSV, it would be broadly considered by SPSS as the data in text format. So I would click this text, okay? And then go to the location where I actually am looking for this data set. So in the desktop, I had saved this data set by uh, the same name. So I will just click open. When I click open, <coughs> this will, not directly open the data set, it will ask for some confirmation. So you see when I click open, okay, it will be asking for some information. And I have to quickly, uh, does your text file match a predefined format? Uh, I would say no, this is not a predefined format. So I would say next. How are your variables arranged? Is it delimited like, for example, uh, by a specific uh, character like comma or tab, okay? Or is it fixed with variables aligned in fixed columns? So I would just use the first option as it is. Are variable names included at the top of your file? No, because I have only looked at the data set and the variable names are not there. So therefore, no is okay, okay? The first case of the data begins on which line number? By default one, and I'm also okay with that because I have looked at the data set, okay? Because when I looked at the data set, 
I know that the first observation starts on the first line. So therefore, it's okay. I would leave it as it is. Each line represents a case. Yes, each line represents a particular week. Uh, how many cases do you want to import? Do you want to import all the cases or some specific number of cases? I would say all the cases. Okay. So therefore, I would also leave it as it is. So clicking next. Which delimiter appears between the variables? Is it the tab? Is it the space? Is it the comma? Is it the semicolon? So when I look at the nature of the data set, okay, you see it seems like a tab, a fixed particular tab on my keyboard. So therefore, there is no comma, there is no single space. It is seems to be a tab. So I would just leave it as it is, okay. That's why I say you should first have a first look at the data and then you can answer all these questions. Uh, where it is. Okay. So, seems that the data apparently is exactly in the same format that I would like to import. Okay. Next. Here you can give the name to each variable okay so i can do it right now or i can i can do it uh, afterwards but if i wish uh, because i would need these names later on so therefore it would be better if from the book i use these name as it is or i use the notations like x1 x2 x3 right so for example uh, if for the purpose of my uh, uh, analysis here, I use x1, x2, and so on, and then give the names to x1, x2. So therefore, uh, I would keep it easier. And I would say, okay, let me use, for example, x1 for the first variable, okay? x2 for the second variable, x3 for the third variable, and x4 for the fourth variable in my data set although as i'm telling you this is totally optional but it's better that you bring into the form uh, of our discussion and the last one is x5 okay x5 so as you can see we have just assigned the uh, short labels you have successfully defined the format. Would you like to save? I would say no for the time being. I don't want to save this format. Uh, would you like to paste the syntax? Again, no. So you just click finish. Okay. And you see, this is how the data has been transferred. But you can do one further step. If you go to variable view, you can give these titles because this would be helpful in your interpretation later on, although initially it's not required. But for example, if I give these names like JP Morgan and Citibank and so on, it would be better. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, JP Morgan, Citibank, Wells Fargo, and so on. Okay. So if I just give these names, uh, for example, JP Morgan, the first variable, and I give uh, Citibank the second one. Uh, what was the third? Wells Fargo, Royal Dutch Shell. So this would be just the name of the third company. And and the last one is, I think, Exxon Mobil. Sorry. So this would be okay. Perfect. So now. The data set is ready, as you can see, starting from 
row number one, which represents week number one, you go up to row number 103. And these information, uh, it would be better that if you just save this information uh, by giving it something like uh, a name, okay? I will call it table uh, eight dash four, right? But this table eight dash four should be saved now in SPSS format, okay? On desktop. So now this data is ready for analysis. In order to carry out PCA on this data set, uh, there is a summary that I would also send to all of you. This is actually uh, what you say, the basic process of PCA. In order to carry out PCA, the first step is that you have to compute the correlation matrix Although you can also calculate the covariance matrix, but the default option in many softwares like SPSS is the R matrix. So the first step would be the computation of the R matrix. The second step is what we call calculation of some quantities from that correlation matrix. There are two types of quantities that it will calculate and I would explain it uh, once I get these numbers. The first quantity are what we call the eigenvalues. Okay, and the second sort of quantities are what we call the eigenvectors. Eigenvalues are constant numbers, while eigenvectors are vectors corresponding to those constants. Once you get these two, in step number three, you get the desired pieces by using the eigenvectors in step number two. So this is a short summary of PCA, and now you will understand uh, when we actually carry out. So these three steps. If step number one is already there, then you have to use the uh, rest of the two steps. In order to carry out PCA, we have to go like this. Go to analyze, okay? Come down to this portion, which says dimension reduction, because I have already told you that PCA, the main purpose, one of the, there are two purposes of PCA. The first main purpose is dimension reduction. So therefore, if you want to carry out PCA and also factor analysis later on, this is the portion that you should come in SPSS. Analyze and then dimension reduction. There is no direct uh, way of uh, carrying out PCA by name. So if you want to use SPSS, uh, for PCA, then you have to click the factor, which is actually a facility for factor analysis, right? In other softwares like Stata and uh, R and SAS, PCA is run separately from factor analysis, but SPSS uses a fact which says that PCA is one way of doing factor analysis. So therefore it runs PCA from within factor analysis, okay? So therefore, there is no separate uh, path for PCA. So if you want to carry out PCA, just use this path. Analyze, dimension reduction, and factor. When you click factor, a box will open, okay? And this box is only asking, as you can see, the title of the box is factor analysis, right? As I have said that, uh, SPSS uses a particular idea that PCA is one particular type of running uh, factor analysis. And I will tell you in what sense uh, PCA is a type of factor analysis. So in the variables box, <laughs> you should bring those variables which you want to use for the PCA. So I would bring all these five to the right-hand side, starting from X1 up to X5. Okay, I would bring it here. <clears throat> and now I will do uh, some of the things that I will do in PCA. I will not do everything over here because that will be actually uh, explained in the context of factor analysis. I will do two things from the first option over here. The right-hand side, descriptives. If I click descriptives at the right-hand 
uh, upper portion of this box. Descriptive scope may press cut down. This further thing will open. Okay, right. Here, one thing you should you must click is your last option up on the RRI. I will explain what is the purpose of this KMO and Bartlett's test of sphericity. Okay. But for the purpose of uh, some discussion, I would also click this coefficients of correlation matrix, although it may not be that much necessary, but for the first time, maybe you want to look at that. Okay. So I'm asking the software to give me the coefficients for the correlation matrix, which means give me the correlation matrix and also give me uh, the results for these two things. One is the KMO, which I will explain shortly. And the other one is Bartlett test of sphericity. After clicking these two coefficients of correlation matrix and the KMO and Bartlett test, click continue. So descriptive portion is done. Now I will click the next, which says extraction. If I click extraction, okay, a box, sub box will open. The first portion would actually tell me what is the method of running factor analysis, as you can see here, okay? Factor analysis, what is the method of extraction? So the default method is principal component method. It is because of this reason that when you run factor analysis using the method of principal components, then although you are running factor analysis, but practically you are actually running principal component analysis. So this facility of factor analysis is actually used to carry out PCA from within factor analysis. So I would leave it as it is because there are other options that I would see, I would, I would show you uh, uh, in, the, in the next discussion on factor analysis, okay? Like for example, if I click this, you see there are a number of other options uh, for the method of factor analysis, right? For the time being, I'm not just doing that. PCA is actually by default run from where? From correlation matrix. If you wish, you can also click covariance matrix, but the preferable method is that you leave it as it is. So therefore, uh, we leave the default option of correlation matrix. Then there is a default decision rule, which is implemented here. Because one of the main objective of PCA is objective number one, that we call dimensionality reduction. So, because you are running data consisting of five original variables, X1 up to X5. So if you don't implement any rule, the PCA would give you five new variables, which means five PCs would be reported corresponding to five actual variables. But because that is not your purpose, you say that I want to get a smaller number of new variables, a smaller number of PCs from the given five variables. So therefore, from the PCA theory, there are a number of rules. One of the rules which is quite frequently used is that uh, in the output, you will see a list of eigenvalues and numbers that will be computed from correlation matrix. <coughs> so the rule says that the number of new variables to be retained should be equal to the number of eigenvalues greater than one. Just look at that list and simply count how many of these numbers that we call eigenvalues, how many of these eigenvalues are greater than one, okay? So if one eigenvalue is greater than one, then you will retain just one new variable. If two eigenvalues are greater than one, then you will retain two. So the number of eigenvalues to retain would be equal to the number of eigenvalues greater than one, okay? This is a default rule from the theory which is used here. Uh, in the next lecture, I would also tell you something about if you want to uh, fix it on your own, then you can just choose the next one, okay? So for the time being, keep it as it is. The last thing that you should do, uh, okay, I will click continue. The last thing that you should do 
should be to click this course and check this save as variable because originally it is unchecked so users should check just this thing save as variables okay save as variables would actually do a particular important function that i will show you on the screen but it will actually tell you that the new variables that you would get out of these five original variables you are asking the software that show me those new variables as separate columns in my data set okay show those new variables as uh, separate columns in my data set which means give me the numeric score of those selected variables so therefore if i click this one and click continue you will see that in these two columns or one column whatever is the number of new variables to be selected they will be added here so therefore apart from the actual five columns one or more columns would also be filled with this scores command now if i click ok this will actually run the pca okay the first output that i would see over here is the correlation matrix this is actually the r matrix so what the software does using the data on those five actual variables it comes up with this correlation matrix as you can see here this correlation matrix is such that there is one 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 on the main diagonal and there are other numbers on the up diagonal the up diagonal entries basically represent correlation among these variables like for example ignoring the main diagonal a graph in main yeah, jo main diagonal hai na, this one ignoring this main diagonal which represents the correlation of a variable with itself the other numbers represent the correlation of two separate variables like the correlation between jp morgan which is our x1 and that of citibank which is our x2 okay is this one 0.632 is the correlation between the rate of returns for jp morgan and the rate of returns for city bank okay and we usually expect that these correlations should not be very much close to zero because if they are close to zero then there is no advantage in carrying out pca because remember that pca would give you better results if most of the variables are correlated agar wo correlated na ho ya usme correlation bahut weak ho then there is no point in carrying out pca right so this correlation matrix can give you an initial idea whether sufficient correlation exists among the actual variables or not if yes the pca would have some value if no then you are just wasting your time by carrying out pca on a data set which is not going to give you uh, useful information but because this correlation matrix in this case as you can see it is 5 cross 5 okay in other situation your correlation matrix can be much larger if your number of variables are more than 5 like in a given data set you are dealing with 100 variables so you would have a 100 cross 100 matrix so in that case it would not be that much easy to say whether sufficient correlation is there or not so alternately we come here kmo and bartlett test and again the purpose of this portion would be to decide whether pca is worth or not right whether you should go ahead and look at the results of your pca or whether you should stop here so this would give you something like a green or red signal how would you determine whether it's a green signal or red signal whether you should go ahead and look at the remaining results or not you have to look at two numbers one is this which we call the kmo kmo stands for kaiser meyer olkin measure of sampling advocacy right kmo kaiser kaiser meyer olkin measure of sampling advocacy and basically this would be this kmo is a number between 0 and 1 right this would be a number between 0 and 1 the closer it is to 1 right 
The closer it is to one, the better it would be. The closer it is to zero, the worse it is. Okay? So, jitna one se closer hoga, utna hi ye aapko kahega ke this PCA is going to give you better results. Now, how much closer is closer? Right? Because how much good it is? The general rule is that a KMO greater than 0.5 is acceptable. Okay? A KMO greater than or equal to 0 0.5. This would be the minimum criteria. If your KMO value is less than 0 0.5, it would mean that you have a poor results and therefore you should not go ahead, stop here, right? The greater it is from 0 0.5, the better it would be. Alternately, you can look at the results of the Bartlett test. If the Bartlett test is significant, as is the case here, then this would be a green signal. This would actually mean that go ahead and look at the results of your PCA, right? An insignificant Bartlett test would mean that there is no use in carrying out PCA. Basically, Bartlett test tests a hypothesis, something like this, H0, the correlation matrix is equal to identity matrix. Although I'm not going into the mathematics of this Bartlett test, but when you are assuming that correlation matrix is identity matrix, identity matrix is a matrix in which the main diagonal is one, 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 right? One, one, up to one. And the off diagonals are all zero. When the off diagonal entries are zero, it means uh, you are saying that the variables are uncorrelated. Remember when the variables are uncorrelated, the PCA theory is telling you that there is no use of carrying out PCA. So this hypothesis must be rejected in order for PCA to have any value. And this hypothesis is rejected when the p-value here, this SIG, when the p-value here, this is the p-value, when this value is less than 0 0.05, okay? Which is the usual rule for hypothesis testing. So when this value is less than 0 0.05, then it means that the PCA has any value. So in the given case, as you can see, everything is okay. KMO is more than 0.5, Bartlett test is significant. Therefore, the, the information would be that this PCA can be used for analysis. Now, once this uh, portion is clear, so I hope you understand the importance of this table because this table can tell you whether the subsequent analysis is going to give you something better or not. The yaan se hame green signal mil gaya, okay? Now, we move to uh, the next portion of our uh, results, okay? Here, this is also a very important part of the table. In this table, this portion gives us those numbers that we call the eigenvalues, okay? You see this name eigenvalues? Eigenvalues are some numbers which you compute from the correlation matrix. And these numbers are actually arranged in decreasing order of their magnitude, which means the first number, which we call the first eigenvalue, would be the largest in magnitude and the last one would be the smallest in magnitude. These numbers are actually computed. Let me just write down the formula and then I will reconnect because I think the time is just running out. This is computed by solving this equation, R minus lambda I determinant. If you solve this equation, this will give you the different values of lambda, okay? How many lambda values would be there? It depends on what is the order of R. If this R is five,